Well, good morning to you. It's Thursday, November the 5th. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour or so. But first, I got to get something off my chest. Brittany, my co-host, is here. And Brittany, as just announced this morning, I'm, I'm very disappointed, and I'm sure millions of Americans are behind me. You want to know why I'm disappointed this morning? Lay it on me, Todd. Well, a certain nationwide coffee chain, everybody knows, and we're not going to mention their name because I'm pretty upset. They've announced their seasonal flavors. Okay, I'm going to go over this real quickly because this is important information. They've got peppermint mocha returning this year, toasted white chocolate mocha, caramel brulee latte, chestnut, chestnut praline latte, and eggnog latte. You know what's not on that menu, Brittany? Water. Gingerbread latte. Oh, what is going on in a world where we cannot have gingerbread latte? I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say this morning. I'm disappointed and, and I just don't, I don't, I really don't know what to do. Well, Todd, I will tell you in light of that, remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder twist and plot. Treason yeah, Guy Fox, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that well, but uh, he paid his price, didn't he? Well, if maybe if you had the gingerbread latte, it would have been, you know, a little different. Gingerbread but. latte could solve a lot of problems in this world if you just gave it a chance. You know, I'm, I'm just very disappointed. Well, I don't drink coffee, um, so can't really share well, your, you go. your pain. You Sorry. Go. Well, I mean, there. I mean, I'm just saying I'm not a coffee drinker, but, you know, I, I do enjoy an occasional <laughs> cream frap um, every now and then. But, you know, it is what it is. But it is. Uh, as Todd said at the top of the show, it's November 5th, Thursday, day four of the hostage situation. We're going to get through it. Maybe I can't speak today. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But <laughs> I do want to tell everyone to uh, please follow us on social media if you already haven't, as well as our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And last but not least, to our audience, and I'm going to even say it to our guests as well. If you've got your own Facebook, be sure to share this podcast. That way we can grow our audience, but more importantly, just share this great information out to those who are not following us. And maybe we'll get them to, you know, be a new follower. So, Todd, let's get into today's show. That's right. We've got two special guests for you today. It's Thursday. That means it's Virtual Family Fun Thursday. And uh, we've got a very special guest, uh, Dr. Sean Fitzpatrick. He is for the executive director of the Jung Center here in Houston. Good morning, Dr. Fitzpatrick. Hey, good morning, y'all. Thanks for having me. Good to have you with us. I want to learn more about your center, and we're going to talk with you in just a little while, if you would stand by. Our first guest we have right now, it's always great to catch up with one of our student success stories. This morning, we've got Shamikia Pepper joining us. She's known as Pepper. Pepper, it's great to have you with us. Um, you're an artist, and you were featured in one of our student success stories, I believe we've done over the last year, and uh, we're very happy to have you with us. We can get you to unmute your microphone. Can you hear us? Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here with you guys today too. It's good to have you with us. Now, I wanna ask you, um, first off, we caught up with you, I think it was about a little over a year ago, and uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about what's going on right now, where you are right now, since uh, you've gone on from HCC. Um, I actually moved to Austin, um, uh, I guess recently got here, um, but uh, I really miss HCC, like I, I miss going there, I miss the teachers. Um, uh, it's been exciting. Um, my whole thing um, when I first initially came to HCC, it was just like, I guess like a start over in life. Um, went through some traumatic issues like with my health and everything right. and kind of left art when I was a kid. And so um, when I got back, I was just like, why did I stop painting? So HCC was the very first doors I walked into. <laughs> and you had a very inspirational series you could maybe tell us about because we featured them in your story. Three girls, the cancer girls. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that because it was a per very personal story for you. Yeah. So um, actually my teacher was just like, um, I want you to do a painting of um just like inside and it was just like something random that he told us to like pick from a jar and i picked where it says um you know 
your personalities or three different, you know, people or beings. And I can't remember specifically. And I was just like, I sat and I thought about it for a little while. And I said, well, you know, I'm completely a different person than I was like 10 years ago. And I went through like these different stages and it's hard to explain. So I decided to put it on canvas so people can see like these three different people and, and to see how I uh, turned out, like how I am right now. And, um, and it was just so like looking at the picture because I have it hanging now in my uh, dining room. So when I look at the picture, it's like literally spells out my life within the last um, years I've been alive and, and what I've gone through. And um, to me, I feel like um, it explains how I've changed and grown. Like I used to be so like stern and strict. And then when I found out I was sick, I started reevaluating things. And then I was just like, well, you know, you're so straight laced. And so I just started saying that I missed the cancer girl because she was the one that was strong. And then I missed the, the stern girl because the stern girl was so like straight laced and book smart. And, and then, uh, and I missed the little girl who used to just do everything and used to paint and just do all kinds of creative things. And I think what I've done now is um, I've channeled all of them um, to make, I guess, the person that you see now. So I'm still straight laced book smart, but I'm just like my creative creative uh, juices is just everywhere. Like. I'm all over the place now. <laughs> well, let me ask you about that creativity. Um, you know, we've been in a somewhat of a lockdown state since uh, March thing. Our lives have completely changed. Many people staying home for months on end. Has that sparked creativity for you um, with uh, uh, the semi lockdown that we went through here in the country? I mean, I, I feel like that's all you have to do. Like <laughs> at this point, um, I have literally have painted my desk three took my desk off and put a new desk and painted my desk. I painted my walls. I mean, it's like every day is something different. Like the people at Home Depot are sick of me. Like they looking at me like, really? You're back here again? Like, what are you doing? And so, and they like take pictures and send them to me. So with the pandemic, I think it has made my creative juices like complete because now all you have is your thoughts and things that you literally took for granted. Like people... Yeah you took for granted, you now see the beauty in it. And so now I paint, like, I'll look at your face right now and be like, oh, I like how he's, he's doing his face like that. And I'll paint your face and I'm painting all over my handbags. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, one thing we learned from you in your videos is that you're, uh, you believe in lifelong learning. Um, maybe you can talk about that. And uh, a lot of people may ask why you're still in school and, and you have a great answer for that. Yeah, I, I feel like um, my, the biggest person in my life is, was my great grandmother. She died at 99, she died last year. And she didn't have the opportunities that we have now. So she, I think she had like a third grade education. And I feel like um, a lot of people take that for granted. So now when I, when I went to HCC and I was just like, well, why, you know, am I not taking advantage of this education or why am I not taking advantage of, you know, my talents? And I think um, HCC has sparked so much in me, like it literally made me look at myself and say, you know, you are capable of doing this. Like, why aren't you doing it? Like, why aren't you not learning German? Like, why is it like, why aren't you not painting? Like, why is it, you know, you have to be in these like categories. And, and I feel like HCC, like my teachers literally is like, do it, like experience it. Why, why are you stopping yourself? And that's one thing I so miss about um, the community of HEC and just being able to go up to the teachers and things like that. So I, I, I don't know if you know, but I'm gonna be 43 in, in December, on December 1st. And um, I, I, I tell people, oh, I'm, I'm a forever college student. Like I'm always <laughs> be in class doing something. So, um, and I'm still taking classes at HCC. So I'm just like, I'm always be in school. <laughs> So, well, you know, with the pandemic, you can do that uh, remotely now that we're offering those and, and you're in you're in Austin, correct? 
Correct, yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's a true testimony to how we can deliver an education remotely. At least that's one good thing that, that's come out of this uh, pandemic. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, do you see yourself moving back to Houston or is Austin now your home? Um, Austin is my home right now, but I have so much family there. Um, and I, the last time I went to Austin, I literally drove by HCC campus. I was like, hi, Central. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so I completely miss it. Um, and a lot of uh, my colleagues and stuff, I still continue to speak with them. Um, I miss my teachers. Um, so it's just, a lot of times I feel like the community was what was the biggest thing to me. Sure. Well, you know, we, we, you know, at least we get a chance to talk to you today because if we were in person, you might not have been able to make it into the Houston area today. So it's, it's great to see you virtually and good luck to you, Shamiki. It's always great to catch up with one of our success stories. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye -bye. And we're going to move on to Dr. Fitzpatrick. Now, uh, of course, Dr. Fitzpatrick is here in Houston, I would imagine. Are you are you located in Houston now, Dr. Fitzpatrick? I have to, I have to confess, I, I, I am visiting family in uh, Colorado. So, oh, so you're out of town uh, right now. Hey, it's the magic of virtual world. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> that works out perfectly as well. But you uh, are the executive director for the Young Center here in Houston. Yes. And maybe yeah. you can tell us a bit about an overview of the center and your mission. Yeah. You bet. So, uh, and it was just so wonderful to hear Pepper, uh, to hear Pepper's enthusiasm and her, and her story, because so much of it connects with, uh, you know, who the Young Center is, and um, we so we we serve lifelong learners. The Young Center has been a nonprofit in the city of Houston for more than sixty years now, and we focus on uh, what matters most to people. Uh, we we have. Um, in a given year, actually, now that we're online, it's it's multiplied in really interesting ways. Hundreds of lectures, courses, workshops, and conversations that uh, are rooted in psychology uh, and uh, and the insights of psychology, and also really critically, the the um, role of creativity for all of us in navigating our lives, navigating transitions across uh, across our lives. Well, let me ask you this, the conversation in this country, it seems like over the past several months has been involving social injustice yes. and also mental health. And um, how are those things that through your lectures, do you find any of your programs and curriculum kind of uh, heading into those waters to discuss things that people may be dealing with right now? Yeah, yeah, the, um, we, we do. And we actually um, were very fortunate to uh, welcome Anthony Ray Hinton to uh, to participate. It was a free, actually a free talk. Those of you who don't know Mr. Hinton, he was on death row for 30 years as an African-American man on death row for 30 years in the state of Alabama. He just voted in his first presidential election actually uh, yesterday wow. and uh, had a really rich conversation with him about structural racism and uh, and the problems with the with the with the uh, criminal justice system uh, in this country, but more importantly uh, about resilience. This was a human being who uh, who not only survived but found a way to thrive and and fill uh, his community uh, on death row um, with uh, hope and uh, and c compassion. Uh, and uh, during the pandemic. Uh, he was, among other things, incredibly inspirational uh, for for our participants because uh, he he found a way really through the power of compassion and, and his own imagination uh, and creativity to um, uh, to maintain his to maintain his um, um, faith in uh, in the world and his his ability to to uh, to function. It's just just beautiful. So we have seen and we had well, we had many many well, hundreds of people participated in that and and uh, ongoing classes on uh, racism, understanding racism from a psychological uh, perspective, and just also just ways to cope with what has been an incredibly um, unparalleled uh, um, experience, incredibly stressful and unparalleled experience in our, you know, in our lives. Well, yeah, I mean, you feel like in this country, <clears throat> one thing just keeps going, everything goes wrong. That's what it seems like now since 2020 has started. Everyone is just like, well, 
the worst could happen because it's it yeah. we're still in 2020. Um, do you have ways of uh, that you've been reaching out to um, your patrons and people who've been visiting uh, virtually, talking about self care and ways that you can yeah. cope with stress and maybe depression during this pandemic? We have, and and actually one of the. Uh, um, uh, surprises for us as an organization, really gratifying surprises for us as an organization, is that our audience has really uh, grown during the pandemic. We have many things that people participate uh, with us online, and they're all, they're all available for free, uh, uh, or not all, all some are available for free, and, and others have fee attached to them uh, through our website. But we also do a, a great deal of work in the community now with. Uh, people who are on the front lines, who are from yeah. social workers to teachers to uh, advocates for the marginalized uh, and um, uh, healthcare workers. We've done a lot of work with the Harris County Public Health Department and the City of Houston's Health Department, uh, helping those people um, learn how to care for themselves and, and hopefully prevent burnout, which is, as you can imagine, these people have been responding to an ongoing public health crisis for months and months and months and weren't prepared for that uh, psychologically uh, or physically, emotionally. Sure. So, yeah. As, let me ask you about this. Do you have any practical suggestions for those of us who may be concerned about our mental health, maybe a little bit too stressed out? Things that you would tell people. Yeah. Um, these are some common things that you know are easy to do and they're gonna maybe lift your spirits a bit. Well, I, I, I have a couple couple things to say. One is sort of the elements of self-care are so fundamental and simple. They're sort of deceptively simple. We need sleep. We need to prioritize sleep. We need to allow ourselves to prioritize nourishment and pay attention to what we're eating and how we're eating. Um, exercise is I can't it is so important. It's the it's the thing that therapists prescribe more than anything for depression and anxiety and the weather just changed in Houston and now we can go outside yeah. uh, and, and move around. I have other ideas too. I, I, you know, there's a term that I've heard people use a lot that I've become a big fan of doom scrolling, wow. uh, which is this, you know, whether we're in our news feeds or on our social media feed and it's just bad news after bad news after bad news after bad news and you can't turn away. And there's, that has a, a really significant impact on our mental health. Um, yeah, so you know, turning I'm, away, stopping the doom scrolling. Stopping the right? scrolling. I've, I've had a few friends who've simply just dropped off of some forms of social media. And when I've asked them why, they said, because it was too depressing for me. You know, and it yeah. would trigger me or I would I would get upset. And then uh, it takes seems like instantly just signing out of social media just for a few hours would take a lot of stress away. I think Brittany wants to jump in here. I do, especially on the topic of, of what now I know is called doom scrolling. I like yeah. that. <laughs> um, about a year ago, um, I take that back even further back. I, I my brother had a, a very severe stroke and it was a very, very traumatic experience for me. And in light of that, um, I was dealing with a lot of uh, mental health you know, crisis, if you will. And since then, I've sought help and, and I'm doing a lot better. And thankfully, my brother is still here with us doing a lot better as well. However, um, on the term of social media, because things were just getting starting to feel a little too overwhelming, I took a detox for about yeah. six months. Yeah. And I can tell you, I didn't miss it. Um, yeah. it. It's like one less thing to worry about, like, oh, I need to go check and make sure, you know, people are liking or or what's the latest and that kind of thing. I, I found myself just not really caring. And that was such a huge weight off my shoulders. Um, and even last night, you know, with the election stuff, I'm like, you know what, I can't, I can't be connected right now. I need to turn off my phone. I need to get away from any media and just, you know, focus on what's important. And that's just myself and my puppy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yes. Oh, the value of pets right now um, oh, yeah. is, is, is tremendous. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, I, it, I can't say enough for stepping away and really being thoughtful about how you consume media, not just social media. I'm a, I, I think that cable news, no matter which network, Cable news uh, is uh, trades in really strong emotion, really strong um, fear, and uh, and uh, it's anxiety producing and and and, and anger producing. And so, um, being very careful about your relationship with with the media is just um, yeah essential right now. Yeah, I used to, uh, when we were in the office, I would always have uh, the television in my office on. And a lot of times it was on cable news and I would keep it very low while I was doing my work. Now, since I'm home, 
that's not on. What I do is I listen to 70s on 7 on Sirius XM all day long, yeah. just about every day, you know, and yeah. the 70s pop music just seems to bring lift my spirits, you know, and it's it's a guilty pleasure, I guess, but it doesn't trigger me. You know, if we if that get that's a great point. So the, the the number one thing I would say for us to do to take care of ourselves is to allow ourselves to be here in the present moment and notice what's actually happening. So you notice that actually what what, what makes you um, happier, makes it easeful for you to work, right? Can get through the day, and you made that change in your life, right? Yeah. So you, but and I do that too, boy. If I I uh, notice that I'm feeling anxious or distracted or something. If I can turn on a little music, right, uh, a little jazz, jazz guitar is what does it for me, then that will that will calm me down. But it all yeah. comes back to this practice of noticing what's actually happening in my body right now, right, right, Absolutely. as opposed to what's what when I'm worried about it might happen in the future or what I'm fretting about happened in the past. The argument I'm still having with somebody in my life or whatever, just being here now um, is uh, the first step and the most important step. That's some great points. Uh, Dr. Sean Fitzpatrick, um, the Jung Center, um, you guys, your gallery is not open right now. Maybe you can talk about that and where you guys are located and where people can find you online. You bet. So uh, the Jung Center physically is not open to the, it lo is located in the museum district. We're right next to the Contemporary Arts Museum on Montrose Boulevard. Uh, we, uh, the building is closed to the public now. We will reopen for limited hours for access to the gallery in uh, in January. Uh, however, we have been doing online classes before the pandemic, so we were in a good place uh, when the pandemic struck to move online. Most of what we do right now is happening online, and you can find us at our website, junghouston.org. Uh, where you can find a list of all the upcoming events and there's almost always something happening uh, uh, online. Dr. Sean Fitzpatrick with the Young Center here in Houston. Thanks for being here with us today. Fascinating to talk to you and we, we welcome you back on the show again sometime. That love, love to come back. Thank you all so much. Thank you. We're going to move on to Brittany and our HCC news and information. Of course, uh, Brittany, big thing going on this week just started. Big news. We're signing up folks for the for the uh, spring semester, registration's underway. It certainly is, Todd. So we opened our registration Monday, and you still have plenty of time, of course, to register for your spring 2021 classes, as well as our mini semester, um, which is going to happen in December. I just wanted to say mini semester. I know, I, I know you love that. I was going to mention that yesterday. <laughs> Glad you brought it up. Yeah, I love saying mini semester. So don't sit on that. It is accelerated, but. Um, it's a great way just to knock out a class out of the way. Um, yeah, you get like three hours credit in a couple of weeks if you pass. Exactly, exactly. But you've just got to be super disciplined as if school you don't have to. I mean, you already have to be disciplined, but this is even more so. But um, we still have a plan to stay safe and flexible with our students. Um, so we have four different learning options um, that students can choose from, two of which are online. Now, one is online anytime. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just log in whenever is convenient for you just to make sure that you do your assignments. Uh, online on a schedule is similar to when you're actually in class, but you're just logging in online at a specified time. Um, just be sure that you're very diligent about that. And then also our Flex Campus. Our Flex Campus, um, you can sign up for in-person classes. Um, you can choose, however, to either come to the campus or participate participate online at a set time. Now, these classes are obviously going to adhere to social distancing requirements. Um, be, be flexible with adjustments and possibly those classes not continuing in person as we did experience um, earlier this year. Um, but signing up early is essential. And the last option is our lab-based courses, which are the critical hands-on skill-based learning that will continue to be offered. These are very similar to like our Flex Campus. Section sizes will be a lot smaller to allow for social distancing. But regardless of what options uh, you choose, we still are offering the same support for our students in the in respect to tutoring, student life, career and pathway advising, and career employment and counseling services, and much, much more. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about our virtual, our virtual services, virtual lobby, uh, the virtual transfer, excuse me, transfer fairs, et cetera. Um, but be sure to enroll early. You don't want to sit on that. Um, and registration, once again, is open. You can lock in your classes today by going to hccs.edu slash now. 
That's right, Brittany. And, and as Brittany mentioned, these class sizes are smaller. So the key here, more than it ever was, we always told you it's better to register early so you can get the times. Now it's very important because of the smaller class sizes. They'll have more of them, but you'll, in order to get the times that you want to attend classes, especially for the lab-based courses and the Flex Campus, you need to sign up early so that you can uh, get into these smaller classes. Um, we want to move on to uh, something that's happening on Friday, very important event for our faculty. It's the Back to the 80s Betacek Orman auction. That is going to be set Friday, November the 6th, tomorrow at 7 p.m. You do have to register ahead, Brittany, and uh, we will include the link to register ahead in the social media post for this show. Uh, Brittany, I want to jump on down to our diversity and inclusion lunch and learn series that's happening. Yeah, it's actually been rescheduled, Todd. Um, so Darren Baskin, who is our HCC Inclusion Fellow, is presenting Understanding and Defeating Unconscious Bias, covering what is and is not acceptable, including sexual, sexual harassment and discrimination. So these are very important topics from our very own Darren Baskin. This is happening next Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. This is happening, once again, next Wednesday, November 11th at 11.30 a.m. Registration is required. So be sure to check your HCCS emails to find out that link, register, that way you can participate. Another event that's very important, Lighting the Fire for Learning, Becoming a Student Ready College. That is happening on Friday, November 13th, a week from tomorrow, from 10 to 11.30 a.m. You can join Dr. Betty Fortune, Dean Desmond Lewis, and, and the QEP Council for a conversation with Dr. Tia Brown McNair. McNair is the Vice President of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Student Success, and Executive Director for Truth, Racial Healing, and transformation campus centers at the Association of American Colleges and Universities in Washington, D.C. So uh, that'll be an interesting discussion. That's happening a week from tomorrow. Uh, check your emails. Registration is required. The link is in your emails. Uh, as Brittany mentioned, virtual open houses, we can't have them in person, of course, because of COVID. So we're doing them online. We certainly are. So open houses are here to connect with new students, parents and school counselors. Uh, and it's also been extended until January. So you can check our website for help with admissions application, financial aid, orientation, advising, and much, much more. So if you want to uh, participate in one of these virtual open houses sessions, be sure to go to hccs.edu slash information sessions. We'll also have the link in this post. Don't let this pandemic go by without, uh, you know, boosting your learning skills, learning something new. Well, our continuing education department has a lot of sessions available online that you can go and uh, take very easily, get a certification, maybe uh, get something that you can earn extra pay. Uh, they've got continuing ed classes from welding to uh, accounting, and that's through HCC School of Continuing Education. They've launched a website where you can check out their schedules at hccs.edu slash ce. And that about concludes the show for today. I'm still bummed over this whole gingerbread latte thing. I'm gonna have to go to a specialty coffee shop and get one of those this year, I guess, Brittany. Or you're just gonna have to learn to make it yourself. I tried that, the syrup you buy, it's just never the same. It's, uh, it's just, that's, things, that's fair. Things just aren't gonna be the same anymore. Especially or you can just give it up. <laughs> Yes, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, tomorrow on the show, we got a great show lined up for you. HCC and University of Houston downtown have joined forces for an upcoming men of color symposium called Resilience Through Education. And we're going to visit with two representatives from HCC's Men of Honor Minority Male Student Organization. Plus, it's Friday, Brittany. It's Friday, so that does mean that we will be visited by our resident poet, but our college operations officer at HCC Northeast, Dr. Jimmy Adams, and he's going to share with us another perspective of his uh, with the rest of us. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show. And while Todd is going to wallow about, you know, the lack of gingerbread latte, I do just want to remind, remind everyone to follow us on social media, share this podcast, and also, don't forget about YouTube, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute.